Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we are looking at the situation where you have a two parallel plates, a top plate and a bottom plate, and there's some fluid in between these two plates. We want to see what happens if the top plate is moving at a velocity of v sub zero, the bottom plate is constant, is held steady, and we want to figure out what is this velocity profile, v as a function of y, in the x direction. So in our coordinate system we have y pointing up, x pointing to the right horizontally, in setting up this problem, we want to make a few assumptions. So the first assumption is that our flow, our fluid is incompressible. So this means our rho, our density, is a constant. Our second assumption is that this will be a fully developed flow. And this means that in this situation, our plate has had enough time to move that our flow has reached some steady state. So our velocity does not depend on x. Or time. So it doesn't, doesn't depend on the horizontal direction. Or on time. And our third assumption is that these are large plates. So we can ignore the z direction. So z So this means that our vz is going to be equal to 0 and our dependence on z is equal to zero. So that means the velocity in the x direction is not going to depend on the z direction. So with these assumptions, we can start solving this problem. So first step in a lot of these problems is setting up the continuity equation, which in a Cartesian coordinate system is going to be dvx dx plus dvy dy plus dvz dz is equal to zero. And so from our fully developed flow assumption. This term is equal to zero. We don't have any x dependence of the velocity in the x direction. And we also know that our, based on our assumption of large plates, our velocity in the z direction is equal to zero. So this derivative is also equal to zero. So this equation leaves us with dvy dy is equal to zero. So this means that if we integrate this, our velocity in the y direction is a constant. Now, if we look at our problem, if the velocity in the y direction is a constant, that means the velocity in the y direction has to be the same at this value and at this value. So since there can't be any flow through these walls, you can't have any flow going vertically through these walls, that means that our velocity in the y direction actually has to equal zero. So this simplifies our problem quite a bit and allows us to just focus on one direction, only on the x-directional flow. Now that we've used the continuity equation, usually the next step is to go to the Navier-Stokes equation. So this set of equations will show up in most fluid mechanics textbooks and transport phenomena textbooks. Um, and this is the version of the equation in the Cartesian coordinate system, which is what we're working on. What we can do is go through this term by term and cancel out the terms that don't matter. So from our fully developed assumption, those two terms go to zero. We know that we don't have any flow in the y direction or the z direction, so all of this left-hand side of the first equation is equal to zero. And again, based on our fully developed assumption, our velocity in the x direction doesn't depend on x. We do keep this term, and our velocity in the x direction doesn't depend on z because these are very large plates. Now as for this pressure term, we're assuming that in this problem, the flow is caused by that moving plate. So we can ignore this pressure and gravity component. In the y and z directions, we can similarly go through term by term. All of these terms and these terms will cancel out. They just equal zero because we don't have any flow in the y or z directions. And so we're left with these pressure components. And so these equations will basically tell us that there's no, the, the contributions of pressure and gravity are equal to zero in the z and y directions. So this is what we learned from these two equations. We can continue trying to solve the, this problem by returning to this term and integrating this term. So I'll write that down here. So 
To solve this equation, we need two boundary conditions. So we can return to this top problem and think about what those boundary conditions can be. A common boundary condition for a lot of these flow problems is going to be a no-slip boundary condition. So that means that the flow at the walls of these plates has to be equal to the velocity of the walls of that plate. So for example, the flow, the velocity at y is equal to zero should be equal to zero, and the velocity at y equals h should be equal to v zero. So I will write these down over here. So our boundary conditions So our velocity is equal to v0 at y is equal to h, and our velocity is equal to 0 at y is equal to 0. The last thing we can do before starting to solve this problem is noting that our velocity only depends on the y direction. So we can actually remove these partial symbols and replace them with ordinary differential equations. So the first step will be to integrate one time. Since this is a second derivative, we can rewrite this as dvx dy is equal to some constant, c1. And then we can do a separation of variables and then integrate one more time. So we end up with dvx is equal to c1 dy. And that'll give us vx is equal to c1y plus c2. And to solve for these two constants, we can use our boundary conditions. So first, if y is equal to zero, we'll, be, we'll end up with vx is equal to c1 times zero plus c2. So that tells us that c2 is going to be equal to zero because we know our velocity is equal to zero at y equals zero. And for our second constant to solve for c1, we can use this top boundary condition. So we get v0 is equal to c1 times h. So c1 is equal to v0 divided by h. This leads us to our solution of vx is equal to v0 over h times y. So note that this is a linear dependence on y. So when y is equal to 0, the flow is equal to 0. And then as y increases, we slowly and steadily increase up to the point where y is equal to h when our velocity is equal to v0. And so if we return to this picture of the problem, we'll have a linear velocity profile, which is shown in these dotted lines right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.